There has not yet been a big bang. Nevertheless, there have been many problems for a month since Brexit became noticeable in real terms. Northern Ireland is experiencing trade problems, Scottish fishermen are spoiling their catch, the music industry is on the bottom. There hasn't been a big bang in the first four weeks since Brexit became noticeable. But there are many problems, including and especially in Northern Ireland. For the Northern Irish Prime Minister Aline Foster, the matter is clear. The Northern Ireland Protocol is not feasible and must be replaced, said Foster. Although it's Foster. The protocol ensures that the border on the Irish island between the EU member Ireland and uh, British Northern Ireland remains open. But there are customs controls between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. This has led to delays and delivery failures since the beginning of the year. And meanwhile, some more, let's say, drastic problems. At the moment, all goods that come to Northern Ireland and could be transported further into the EU internal market are checked, says Northern Ireland Prime Minister Foster. Most of the goods from Great Britain do not even come near the Irish border, but remain in Northern Ireland. Therefore, these controls should not take place, she says. Supermarkets struggle to get all the products in January, with shelves sometimes remaining empty. The Brexit is particularly noticeable in agricultural products, both in trade between Great Britain and Northern Ireland and between Great Britain and the EU. And, well, we all expected that. Nick Allen from the Association of the Meat Processing Industry reports of mountains of documents and complex food controls. An official veterinarian has to go through every single product in the hold to see whether the respective certificate is available. He has to enter everything by hand. Then the veterinarian has to stamp it for different certificates in different colors. And when I transport it from England to France and Germany, it has to be available and stamped in all three languages. Nick Allen says that, the, that he recently got hold of a particularly curious example. There were more than 50 different stamps on it. The bureaucratic effort costs time and money. The Scottish fishermen felt the same in January. We lose tens of thousands of pounds a week, said one person affected. We transported goods to the continent. It took five days. It arrived unusable and rotten. The UK government has now allocated 23 million pounds in compensation to the fisheries sector, but it will be interesting to see what happens when the money runs out. 10 Downing Street stresses over and over again that it would only be a problem in the beginning. But it is obvious that this is only half the story. Another industry I already reported about, the music industry, has also received massive protests in recent weeks. 100 greats in the business have written an open letter. They complain that musicians now need expensive work visas and have to do a lot of bureaucratic work for their equipment if they want to tour the EU. And that's worse for the small ones. Rock musician Bob Geldof says, that's okay for Elton John and Queen and for Sting, but it's over for all musicians in the midfield or aspiring musicians. And that's quite true. Despite all of these problems, there are also Britons who are happy with Brexit. And the fact that the EU is struggling with their vaccination program is just a confirmation that the UK is better off on its own. And that part is always brought up as a smoke screen now by Brexiteers who want to cover all the other issues with Brexit with this vaccination stuff that has nothing to do with Brexit. But to make one thing clear, they always are so proud that Britain vaccinated more people so far than Germany, for example. But I talked about this in a very early video about these two different ways of approach. First of all, Germany is calculating both doses before they make an appointment for everyone to be vaccinated. If the dose is not already there, the second dose, 
and it can be ensured that you can get vaccinated, you won't get an appointment. Second of all, the European approach was the right thing to do because it's not us first. And so it was right to order all the stuff together. Of course, there may be some problems that they took care of the money and, and uh, didn't just order tons of, of stuff from every company. But if, uh, as Angela Merkel said yesterday, if no new vaccine is being um, validated in the EU anymore, with what we ordered from the companies that already have the certificate in the EU, we still can vaccinate everyone in Germany who wants to be vaccinated until September. That's part one. The second part is we wanted to take the safe paths. We didn't want to take a risk of any kind with health, so there was no emergency clearance for a vaccine. The UK chose otherwise, I don't blame them for that, but that is a difference you have to note. They took that path, we took the secure path. It's up to every country themselves how they want to do it, but we wanted to be more secure with the whole process. And the same goes for other vaccines that apply for clearance in the EU. And it's not a race. It's not we are vaccinated first at the moment. It's more important to give the vaccine to the right people first and to organize that one and to make sure everybody gets both doses. And the problem with the Article 16 thing that's always brought up by Brexiteers to smoke screen every other problem, Article 16 wasn't invoked. It wasn't ordered to do so. So, cut the crap. And vaccination is not something you should use in debates about who's better, who's worse. We are talking about people's lives here and that is too serious to play, to play games with that. And I will not have that on my channel. That topic is too serious and I will not let anyone play games with that topic. So that was the word for the Sunday as we say in German. Auf Wiedersehen.